Okay, so let me try this out here. Yeah, I'm going to work with natural materials because uh, I'm kind of doing a series of videos uh, with natural materials, so it, it's easier if I just continue with it. Even though I could probably be more efficient with uh, modern tools with this particular piece. Hope I don't mess it up. This was actually not bad. I could probably pre pressure flake this too. I wish I could remember if it was heat treated or not, but if I if I find out, I'll put it in the description. I still have that cut from the other day. Trying to get through a, a zone like that with uh, uh, just a hammer stone is kind of difficult, so let's see. Not too bad actually. Easier than Rhylite. Normally I'd work down there, but for some reason I can't get the camera to angle it. Uh, I can't get the camera to a good angle when it's down here, even though I've lowered the camera quite a bit. So I, uh, I'm moving this antler upwards. It changes my whole uh, strategy as far as the, the angles go. I usually like to have it more horizontal like this, but I, for some reason, even though I angle the camera where I can just barely see the viewer, I can't seem to uh, keep it in the middle of the frame. So, for the video, I change my positioning on the flakers, and the striking is differently done than I normally do. In case some of you guys notice, all right. So I, I powered through that area with the uh, punch. I kind of feel like doing the rest with the punch now.
it's always a dilemma when I've when it's really wide but then it's longer on one side than the other you know do I keep the width and make a really wide point or do I shave some off one one side to keep the length it, it usually depends on the uh, the point that I'm trying to recreate but for knife blades the way I do my knife blades this is just a side note if I encounter something like this which is very very common I'll just make this the tang of the knife and then cut back a little bit on that kind of like this okay I'll scoop out this area and, and make a knife like this out of it you know what I mean but for an arrowhead I, I tend to uh, oops, sorry I tend to knock off the uh, the width and take this off here because most arrowheads are narrow most real ones are narrow sorry about the camera Taking off some width allows me to bevel it for some thinning strikes. I'm going to try to hit that with a hammer still and see what happens. Hit that pretty hard, but it didn't go anywhere. One more time, and if it doesn't do much, I'll switch back to the indirect flaker. I don't want to hit too high because it'll snap the whole thing. That's why I'm. I'm airing on the side of caution and I'm just barely missing that and I'd rather catch just the the edge and do a short flake than too high and, and crack the whole thing That 
one I hit really high, but I, I didn't get much. You see, I hit pretty high on that. Yeah, I can do the same with the indirect punch. So, no sense in using the hammerstone. As you can see, hammerstone requires a lot more concentration and a lot more risk than a punch. And then you end up with so so results. It's all steppy, but I think I can blow through those steps if I hit really hard with the punch. If my camera will cooperate, it's actually the uh, tripod and the setup. Okay. And I've got it really, really close. I don't know if you can tell. Just barely enough room to swing. And it still looks like I'm far away. Okay. So yeah, to do that with a hammer stone would require many days of practice. And uh, you notice I don't do much of this uh, intense grinding or using the hammer stone to remove flakes. Because when I do that, I tend to remove too much. And that's what you don't want to do on the edges. You don't want to remove too much. If you're concerned about, uh, if you're concerned about conserving material. You don't want to lose much off the edges. That was a good one. I have another finger guard around here somewhere. I try to keep everything in one little area so I don't have lots of places to spread out my stuff. I do, you know, because if there's too many places to put things, I lose them too fast. But then I've got a whole stack of stuff over here. <laughs> yeah, but it's, I think I'd rather have a big stack of stuff in one small spot than try to keep track of where everything is spread out okay I'm hitting really high up on the on the edge. I don't know if you can tell. 
but on these strikes I'm a little bit higher than normal so I can really dig in. When you dig in like that it increases the amount of time you're in contact with the platform and it'll run longer flakes. You can see that one ran all the way to that area right there and it's because I went a little bit higher up but the higher I go on here the more it eats it the more it eats away at the tool so uh, there's a trade-off you know you have more effective longer flaking but then your the use on your tools is shortened you know the time that you can use your tool so you've got to plan out uh, how to use this minimally I try not to use it for everything just on these longer flakes now some of you guys are doing very wide very large pieces so it seems everything you do requires a long flake perfectly fine just be prepared to use a lot of material a lot of tool material and if you're not using a lot of tool material and you're getting a lot of long flakes tell me how you're doing it <laughs> I'd like to know You know, I've, I've heard guys say they've had billets for years, you know. They get one moose billet and they've had it for 15 years. Well, I've had this for maybe, I don't know, three years. And I'm, I don't nap all the time with it. Maybe once, maybe a month out of every year I nap with it. So if I was napping with it every month, it would last maybe six months before it got down to you know pretty flat because that bone I go through that bone easily it was you know both of these bone areas are really getting worn down and I don't use these very often So I can't see using a billet for a long time unless there's something I'm missing. It might be because I'm using tough materials all the time. I do have a lot of heat treating, a lot of heat treated material, but I end up napping the rough stuff and uh, giving away the heat treat <laughs> or selling the heat treat. Uh, a lot of guys say I can't heat treat the stuff I've got effectively and every time I order heat treated from someone else they send me junk 
So can you send me some, please? And there I go, sending off all my good stuff. <laughs> anyway, it's all right. I can uh, I can get more. All right, so it's getting kind of thin. And it's cooperative. This is more cooperative than rhyolite. It just feels it feels very similar to to rhyolite. It it flakes a lot easier. It's a lot less steppy. But it, it is a chert. It's not bad. I mean, I like brown chert. It's one of the rarest cherts, I think, to find brown. But this would look so, like so far. Uh, I don't want to get it much thinner than that for the video because it'll just snap. And I don't want to snap this one, so. Switch over to pressure for a little while and go back to percussion if there's a thick spot. And then finish up with pressure. I was going to make a bunch of new bits today so I'd have some that, to change out instead of sanding when it gets dull. But I didn't have time. So hopefully it'll work. I'd rather have it a little more pointy than that, but that's okay. Yeah, the finger protectors don't work for the uh, pressure. I mean, they do. Uh, can't get my glove on. Is that too close? I gotta change the settings on the camera or something because it seems like whenever I get really close it's really blurry. Usually it zooms right in. That's just eating away at the at the bit. It's okay. You just have to know the limitations on your on your bits when you make them out of bow and antler you get used to it but again you you know you have to go through the material to get used to it that's the kicker you know you have to get used to how dull the edge has to be to get a good purchase and then be able to peel off a flake. It can't be really thin and people ask me why do I grind it? It's because if it's really thin and I push on it, it just crushes right away. It just goes, if it's real thin and I push on it, it goes and it just doesn't do anything. It just goes it doesn't do anything. It has to be thick. It has to be dull. I gotta do this. Make it dull and if it's still too pointy or whatever uh, or too weak I've got to uh, brush it down knock off those weak areas and rub it again and I like rubbing a large area so I don't have to rub little area and then little area then little area as I go along just do the whole thing but some guys uh, will just go back and forth across the tops and just bounce across the top and you're not getting in between so I also got to make sure I get in between these bumpy areas on the top you have to go all the way down in between all that stuff or try to anyway it's good to be dull at the very tops of those bumps because you can push on those to remove flakes <clears throat> but you don't want to only do the tops because then you can't go in between and remove flakes easily. You have to come back and oops, I forgot that spot and grind and then come back and forth. All right, and I also have to watch there's pieces that get stuck in the tip.
There's a little piece stuck in there. I don't know if you can see. You gotta watch out for those. Sometimes you gotta watch out. Usually they're okay. But if you're one of those nappers that's extremely pressure picky. <laughs> pressure picky, yeah. Hypersensitive to the pressure flaking mistakes. You don't want to uh, have anything on the bit. No, no rocks embedded in there. I don't really care if the edge is perfect when I pressure flake it. I mean, I've I've toned down the uh, my demands on the stone quite a bit over time. It's better for the nerves that way. And I say a lot of good enough, good enough. All right. Twenty-eight minutes. All right. It's still in the preform stage. Where's the other one? I have another one here that I did with aluminum. Compare pretty much the same size. I might do the same style, although I don't know what what style this is. I just did it uh, quickly. I'm, I'm pretty much only familiar with Texas stuff, unless I look it up in the book. When I turn the video off, I'm going to look up one in a book and see if I can find one that's relatively easy. But you can see the flaking is similar. Let me see. Okay, this one's a good one. I mean, aluminum and antler produce fairly uh, consistent results. This is this is aluminum napped. You'll see. Uh, you'll see a better when it's finished, I guess. I'll compare these when they're finished. All right.